This segment is brought to you by Black Hills Information Security, Pentest, and Active Defense Consulting at BlackHillsInfosec.com. Chuck, do you have anything to say there? Oh, I do. I do. Please contact Mike us. Mike we- Perez is here from Black Hills Black Information Hills. Security. John yep. Strand was on earlier. He's the brainchild. We're doing great the, things. All, the so the all curator I can say is of Black Hills Information we're, Security. We're, we're doing great things at Black Hills. Please reach out to us. We'd love to help you out. Consulting at Black Hills Info Sec. Reach com. around? Yep. Oh, reach out. And, and, if they don't, out. and if they don't answer, Larry at Guardians.com. Oh! oh. <laughs> that was cold. That was cold. I, will, I will be happy to forward the email to Joff. And yeah, Larry. sure he would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After the show, there'll be No, seriously, we refer to work to you guys. I've been time. working out. <laughs> <laughs> You looked sexy in that ladies cut t-shirt. I too. did, right? Y- you've been working out, but I can run faster. I want to well, welcome uh, <laughs> Michael Santa Santarcolangelo. Michael, welcome to the show. Welcome hey back, I should say. How's it going? Thank you very much for joining us for a very special episode 400 in support of the EFF, EFF.org forward slash donate. Michael, I tasked you with, uh, with I'm sure, was a very strenuous uh, segment. Uh, <laughs> you wrote an entire book on breaches called Into the Breach. So I said, why don't we talk about breaches? And Michael's like, yeah, sure. Let's talk about breaches. It's and I said, let's idea. take it. What's that, Michael? It's a good idea. Yeah, great <laughs> idea. Yeah. So uh, what I wanted what to focus said. on was uh, kind of a different twist on the breaches good. discussion. Um, what are five questions organiz- organizations should be able to answer in order to avoid a breach? And I thought with the Sony breach, in all of the breaches that we've had this year, that this was kind of an interesting question to ask. So I turned to our good friend, Michael, uh, to help us answer, uh, answer the question with questions, which is kind of weird. Yeah, well, and you know, it, it's um, the, one of the interesting things is I looked at the question, and the first thing I noticed is we, we immediately then said, well, how do we prevent the breach? And I think what I've seen so far of today and what we seem to talk about a lot of times is we carry this prevention bias with us. And I think that one of the things that we can do is to start to set that aside and assume more of a a assume breach mentality, one that says, all right, we might get breached. So what? So what do we do about it? So, you know, I looked at it and I've, I've thought a little bit about the questions that we've tended to ask ourselves over the last decade or so. And what I what I really started to look at is uh, what I call the competencies of IT leaders. And I'm going to share the three basic competencies that I think frame what some of these questions are uh, and that we can do differently. And I, and I saw that you've suggested some, too, that, that I like. So I'm just going to I'm going to twist the lens a little bit. And I'm going to color these. Here's the three competencies. If you want to be effective in IT today. Right. And by the way, that means if you're in security or you're somebody who needs to be aware of security, You need to be able to prioritize your assets and your efforts. You need to be able to measure and demonstrate your wins, your wins, not your losses. Uh, And you need to be able to communicate that value to somebody else. So what what we're starting to find is what shifts and what changes. If you, whether you want to avoid the breach or you want to avoid the fallout from a breach, the way that we're approaching it now means we need to rely on other people. So there's a couple questions that, that that I would start with. And here's the first one. What is your mindset? What's your approach? I'll tell you what, we did something uh, over the last couple of months where we, we've gone out and we've talked to a bunch of people and we've asked a really simple question. How many of you assume breach, right? So how many of you get it that, that breaches, whether we like it or not, they're, they're more or less inevitable. It's not if, it's when. How many of you have embraced that? Every time we've asked it, 70, 75% confirm that's their mindset. Yeah, if you Michael, follow up, I'm, I'm though, sorry, and I'm say, cool, inter- well, what have you done about it? Sorry, I'm just going to interrupt you really quick there uh, to give some context. In a previous segment, we sat down with um, arguably the host on this panel and the host on the, the remote panel, some of the best penetration testers uh, in the world today. We had, um, you know, Joff and Larry who do pen testing full time, John Strand, Dave Kennedy, H.D. Moore, uh, and Rob Fuller, yeah. a.k.a. Mubix, on the show. <laughs> right? And we're talking about just that. Like, you know, what is what is your success rate? What what? is successful for you what trips you up kind of thing and it was a very interesting discussion and it definitely leads into your topic of okay prepare for a breach and if you got a lot of these guys doing a penetration test like they're going to get in in one way or the other and you have to be prepared for that and, so it's, it's and, a great segue and before you go to that you know thank you for including me in that that was <laughs> yeah by the wow. way i'd like to be in the team of cool kids too <laughs> I, I appreciate that yeah. Well, I mean, you guys are breaking into organizations every every week. We right? are, and 
Wait, it ties uh, into what Michael's saying is you, you have to prepare for that. So. I, I would push Michael's statement just one step further. And, and, and Black Hills were actually doing this. And that is not to assume that um, we will be breached. It's assumed that we are breached. Mm. You know, take it that one step yeah. further and say, look, it's already happened. <laughs> assume? <laughs> right. I mean, and, and so, yeah, we are breached, right? So, no, look, that's, that's and if you point. take that stance and then you move out from there, it changes the mindset. You know, it changes your whole approach to the, to the problem because you're not in that defense mindset of let's stop this. You're in that, oh shit, we're already, we're done we're here. Yep. Let's, let's find out, let's dig deeper. Let's find out the how and the why and the when and the... Bingo. Yeah. Yeah, so go so, ahead, yeah, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. I want yeah. to say some well, no, you know, I mean, I, I, I tuned in and I listened to Mike Poor's conversation. And the one, I mean, he said a lot of stuff that I thought was f fantastic, but he made the comment about a lot of people deploy their IDS at the perimeter. Great. Well, once they're past that, now what? Yep. Once exactly. somebody bypassed your prevention controls, all the money, I mean, the, the, the stats that have come out from Gartner are that 90% of our budgets go toward prevention, it's 10% for detection and response. I'll tell you what. Everybody I've talked to about that this year laughs, and when I, when I ask why, they go, I wish I was spending 10% on those other things. We're, we're, we're not calibrated at that level yet. So here's the thing. If you get it, and, and after that all-star panel and those discussions today, we should be getting it, then the logical question, so what have you done? Then Jeff's got a great point. If you say, okay, I've already been breached, well, then did you go look for it? Did you bring in an expert that can exactly. help you find it? Yeah. Did you make sense out of it? Did you learn from it? But then it starts to lead to the really simple question. And Paul, it's one of the questions that you listed out, right? So where, where are my systems and what are they? Uh, here's why I ask it differently. What, what are your priorities? Where, where are your priorities, right? Because, there, and there's two parts to this. One is, what are the priorities of the organization? And therefore, what are your priorities? Because we, we can't do it all. And I think it's, 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 uh, not helpful for us to try. So the question then is, of the time, the talent, the resources that you have, what can you do and, and are you doing it in an effective way? Which leads to a really simple question. What, do you, what can you automate? What are you automating? You know, it's, uh, maybe this is a, a little contrarian for folks and it's, it's a little bit of a diversion so we won't go too far down the path, but every time I see folks tell me, uh, we don't have enough people, there's not enough training, we can't possibly get it all done, you know, I. I don't agree. I, I think that we may need more people. I, certainly more training, I think, would be a fantastic idea. But until if our answer to something is, well, let's throw more bodies at it, well, then of course we don't have enough people. No, the, but, trick, you know, is, the trick is to change the focus, right? Bingo. The trick is to change the focus because if you're in that defense mindset of we've got to defend, 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 yeah. defend. Prevent, prevent, prevent. Prevent, yeah. you will never win. Mm. You will yeah. never win. But if you're in the mindset of, we've got to hunt for, I mean, yes, we're going to do our due diligence on defense. Don't get me wrong. But we're going to hunt for the things that have happened, that we know are happening. And we're going to focus our talent on the things that we know are happening to discover yep. what's going on. It's, but you've got to get the organization over that barrier of, of admitting failure, frankly. Because that's well, what it so, is. Well, so you know what? Let me let me touch on that because I I, uh, I sent Paul some thoughts, and this is one of those things that, that I kind of put. But oh, you know what? I didn't put it in here as much as I wanted. Um, I actually wrote an <laughs> article uh, about it today. So if people don't know, I, I write for CSO, and I, I write about um, leadership and, and and these types of things. The article I wrote today was actually specifically questioning the story that we tell ourselves, right? Because one of, well, here's the thing. We want to start to shift the organization. Then what I wrote about two weeks ago was what story are we telling in the organization? And what I realized over the last week or so is that we keep talking about gaps. We keep talking about our failures. We keep, I mean, gosh, the coverage in the last two weeks, I look for the positive in, in any of it. And, and you don't, you don't see, oh, we can fabricate. Well, now people will listen. Well, now they'll pay attention. Well, now they understand. Yeah, that's nice. He, here's the thing. We don't have gaps. We didn't fail. What the things changed. I mean, you guys, especially those of you that do the pen testing, you know how disciplined our, our adversaries are. And I know that the nation state has again in the last 48 hours risen to the top of everybody's mindset. But these cyber criminals that are, are in, incredibly intelligent and gifted and disciplined and using supply chain like tactics 
and doing a hell of a better job at measuring and evaluating their return on investment than we are, I'm a lot more terrified about those folks. But here's the thing then, our technologies have changed. I mean, I can remember when my very first computer that I bought myself that I had, right, it, it had those huge brick, you know, it was a 40 megabyte, maybe 20 megabyte hard drive, and, and it was the size of a small house. Um, I have more computing power in my pocket now, and oh, next to that is my tablet, and oh, next to that is my laptop, and oh, next to that is the one we have set up for the kids. I mean, we have so much technology around us now that it's not as defined as it was. All right, so our enterprise has changed, our technology changed, the way we work changed, the amount of information that we move around electronically and the way that we use it and protect it or fail to has changed. And our attackers got a whole lot more disciplined and they're looking at stuff in a very different way than they ever did before. We didn't fail. Things shifted. And that's why it's important because if because these conversations that we have to have are both with, with our business colleagues, with the executives, but also with the board, the boards of directors. And I, I recently got to talk to a, a guy who's the chairman of a board of a directors, former CIO, and, and his point was stop calling them a gap because if you go to the board and say, all right, well, look, we screwed up, we failed, we can't possibly do it, but I need more money for this. They're going to look at it the same way you just presented it, right? So what's the story we're telling ourselves? Is that we failed? Mm -mm. If we change that, if we, and that's why I've got some of these questions that are different, then we can go to them and we can say, hey, guys, look, the world has changed. It's shifted. And so some of these legacy things that we've done, we need to keep. Some of them we need to let go. The question is which, and we need to start thinking about that. So, Jeff, I mean, that's where that mindset has to shift. So, yeah, we, we've already been breached. The other thing I always look at with that is, yes, you're probably already breached, but it doesn't mean that, that you give up all hope and you'll never get it right, right. What it means is just assume on any given day you're breached and you need to be spending a fair amount of time looking for these problems before they bubble up, before yeah, the data yeah. is exfiltrated, before something else happens. Well, it's about focusing the resources, and, and I think too much focus has been on defend, 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 and prevent uh, when, you know, let's face it, those of us in the industry that, that, that hack for a living, which, which a lot of us here at the, at the table do, we know that you can defend really, really well, but it just takes a really small percentage. It just takes that one thing on one box to be broken. Yep. And we got it. Done. Done. Game over. Now, that's an impossible task. I mean, the odds are against the defenders. So for an organization, if you can refocus and go, okay, yeah, yeah. we need to defend and prevent. That's important. But... We need a significant proportion of people doing analysis on the uh, the basis that we are breached, on the basis of the assumption that mm. we probably are going to fail, and let's actually look for that compromise activity because <clears throat> we know it's probably there somewhere. And let's face it, we're going to find it better yes. if we're not spending all that energy purely on defense and prevention, right? Well, it goes further than that i i'm a retired pen tester i haven't done it in 10 years and uh uh and i have a dod background <laughs> legit um you know, nice sweatshirt by the way Jeff. Well, thank I, you I, I like that yeah um you know back in where i came from you know the part of the the science if you will or the discipline of security was understanding i think the term we use these days is threat actors or threat agents mm -hmm. but understanding yep. Uh, not only understanding your assets and, and what's, what, what do you have that's valuable, but who would want it, who would want to do something with it, who, who's got it out for you. I mean, we used to have all sorts of different uh, you know, sub-organizations that were, would report I was going to need to travel somewhere. There was an office that would report on what the current threat level <laughs> is in that country that I was going to be visiting yeah. to know whether I needed to be taking extra cautions. Of course, I got a notice one time I was getting ready to go to West, Vir West Germany, not West Virginia. I thought he was about to say, I <laughs> thought he was about to say West Virginia. Uh, I did too. I and, did I, too. I, I, and I got a notice from this is there, office. Is there a difference in the uh, types of shots you need to get? Uh, <laughs> no, not actually there isn't. But, you know, I got this notice that, you know, threat level or threat activity is high as, you know, there's some, some something imminent in West Germany. And it was right around the time, if you can remember a million years ago, there was a bombing at a discotheque. Yeah. Yeah. It was around that I, time frame. I, I do so the threat level was high, and I was like, okay, does that mean I don't travel? Are you telling me not to go? I mean, you know, what, 
you know, yeah. or, or am I just supposed to be more careful? T- tell me the playing field here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, what it was supposed to do was, you know, be a little bit more cautious, you know, wa- watch where you're going, you know, pay attention to your surroundings, that type of thing. I mean, that's, that still applies today is, you know. Absolutely. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to add is we tend to focus on the technology. And, yes. and security is not technology. I've said for years, technology is not the solution. Technology is the problem. Um, and, and part of the problem is that we we get sort of laser focused on the technology and don't step back and look at the larger issues of security, which don't change. You know, you know what are the threats? What are the risks? What's what are we trying to protect? I've been to many, many companies over the years that, you know, especially in the early days when I used to do pen tests and vulnerability assessments. We want a pen test. Why? What, what do you want to try to What's, your, what's, what's, your what's the objective? What's the goal? Yeah, they had no clue. Yeah, yeah, but we they just it. thought we it was the this. thing to do. But it was know? cool. I mean, they wanted yeah. one, but they had no idea what they wanted. Well, they what had the a checklist. It said that they needed one. Right, right. Because oh, I because would come PCI in made them do it. No, well, this is way before PCI. <laughs> right. but yes. Jack. Well, you know, you know, in my in, in my opinion, I mean, th- there's value to a pen test, but I I have a lot of customers that when I'm finished, will tell me. Yeah, we kind of knew that. Oh, right. yeah, absolutely. Right. A lot of you have probably heard that. It's mm-hmm. like, yep. yeah, we knew that was coming. We knew we were vulnerable there. Well, why did you pay us exactly? And, and or I'll the t- flip side, and I'll t- and I'll tell you, you probably could have told them what was wrong before you ever did it. Yep. Well, you c- right. You could have anticipated right. what so the problems like, were going to so be. So I went through all this effort. I wrote up a report and this and that. And it's like, okay, this is where you're vulnerable, blah, blah, blah. This is how we pwned the living crap out of you. And you get that reaction like, I knew that. Okay. Does yeah. it, th- so then the question comes, does it have value? Yes. And the answer is yes. Uh, and and the, in and my opinion, the, the answer is yes because in a lot of organizations, even though their internal people are telling them, yes. we are broken here, yes. you really have a problem. So, to have oh an God. external you, consulting entity so, so come in and say, yes, you are indeed you're, broken you are here. Screwed. Yeah, so you're screwed. Had, who's, who is that has value for them. Who has, depending on which side of the equation you're on, either told a pen tester up front, hey, buddy, look here. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, or right. We've had been that. a pen tester and had somebody inside say, hey, look here. Yeah. Yes, right. on both of those <laughs> yeah, cases. Right. Right. right, because it's like, uh, look, I know well, I, maybe, I, maybe I, you I, guys I, are going to find some other stuff. I will also add. Or maybe we'll find some other stuff. But for the. Love of whatever oh, it is you holy. worship. Yeah, um, k- this ain't right. And uh, my also, fr- my I, friend I've Bob been, has uh, seen some stuff. I would all, uh, go ahead, Larry. Uh, I would, uh, just real quick. I would also I'll add telling that to not only a pen tester but an auditor. Right. Okay, right. Oh, that's well. Well, that's, I was gonna. I was gonna that's say. That's cold. Uh, <laughs> that, but my friend Bob has done that too. I, I, I was gonna say that um, I've had that experience also, where I've had the sponsor of the pen test being some sort of security officer in a company do the same thing. Say, hey, psst, psst, look here, right? Because he's looking for mm-hmm. some political power. He's looking mm-hmm. for some pushback that says. Look, this external consultancy told me that this is a really big problem, and we're ammunition for him, yep. which is very, very important. But I will qualify that with the flipping that model on its head and making the assumption that, hey, you're already compromised. Let's help you out. Kind of hunt for the for the evidence for the evidence of comp- compromise is actually got. Ultimately, a lot more value, in my opinion. Get them back. Get them back. The yeah, because in a pure pen testing perspective, if you just tell them and you're holding up the mirror and what they already know, they're sort of wasting their money, in my opinion. Yeah, right. right now, we have, we have uh, we have been on a pen test recently where the the comment was, you walk in the door, and the the point of contact who brought us in said, I fought tooth and nail to get you guys in the door. Here's what I want you to do. I'm new here. I've only been here three months. Yeah. This place scares me. Mm-hmm. We need help. And no one's listening to me. Yep. I want you to own us six ways to Sunday. And right. if I need to help direct a little bit of that so that <laughs> exactly. I can get some help to make this better, please do. 
And, look, you, and, you, and quite honestly, in me, in those types of cases, we don't need any help or pointing in the right direction aside from <laughs> you have. Yeah, you're going to you, find it. You right. have 1,000 servers. You tell us the one where the really sensitive information lives uh, after we've already popped your shit because of MSO 8067. Yeah, or something stupid like that, right? You're going to find it. But yeah. there's nothing wrong with that, in my opinion, because I like to help those people That's in a huge way because... They do. They need us yep. as a very valuable uh, service I, I, to I, give them that pushback. I, I will quote right, someone. So, go ahead. Well, let me let me just bring it back for a second, then, because what what I love is is we're we're jumping through all the questions that, that I laid out. So that tells me I, I did something that was probably pretty useful. <laughs> here, here, here's the Yay. question to ask, though: <laughs> What can I learn from testing? Uh, so what I what I've heard, what you guys have pointed out is that people uh, are using you as a lever, right? Uh, or sure. some sort of leverage where they say, no one's listening to me. I'm going to pay you guys money and you're external. And so when you come in and you tell them, oh, then they're going to know. The rest of my questions that we'll get through still apply. And I find a lot of people don't know. They, they want that for credibility and that's great. And, and they keep doing it to show them, um, you know, either what's wrong or eventually when they're not new, you know, I, I'm going to show you how good I am. The thing is, if I'm paying you guys to red team me, then I kind of want you to win because I'm going to go learn from what you did. So what it means then is that if I bring you in, not only do I want you to, to win, I want you to tell me how and why because I need to learn about that mindset and that's yeah. going to help me both improve the conversations I have with the executives and the board and it's going to help me get a better understanding of what could go wrong in my environment yeah. because again as we've all agreed and we can agree on this until the, the cows come home uh, we, we disproportionately bias ourselves and our budgets towards prevention all right well we know that that's there, there's a better way to do it but see here's the other question go to most people and say okay well what's the report card on your on your preventative controls look like well, what do you mean? Uh, well, I mean, did you score them? Did uh, you look at them? Right. Um, you get that uh, kind of response. Uh, well, if you guys come through and, and you blow through a couple of things and you knock them over like they weren't even standing there, it might suggest to me I don't need to keep spending money on that. Or maybe it's a quick configuration. Or there's some other element to it. But, you know, if, if we can't do it all, then we have to reallocate. And sometimes that means we got to reallocate the budget. Leads me to, to one of these other questions. And I, I sent them to Paul. I, we could probably clean them up. But he, here's the question I have. And, and it, it feeds off of the testing and off of the mindset. What's the confidence that you have? Both. Or not both. It's across your people, your process, and your technology. Right? And we always bristle when we go, well, what do you mean confidence in my people? I actually mean my people, my security people. You know, I, I love it when somebody says to me, well, I mean, we're very good at incident response. We right. do it every day. What do you do every day? You clean viruses off of a, of a computer by re-imaging it? Yeah, I mean, okay, cool. Um, wow, you're wasting a lot of time on crap that's probably really not that important. Where are you spending your time? So, so the question then is, what, are, what processes do you have? Are they working? What, what, you know, and what I, we started to ask about before is what are you automating? But then what's your confidence in the automation? I mean, I've been looking at stuff in the past couple of months where, where people love their alerts, right? And, and, and the recent breaches uh, always seem to bring alerts now into focus for us. If you've got an 80% false positive rate and the average analyst on your team gets earns about 50 bucks an hour and you're blowing through a team that's spending 250 hours a week chasing down false positives, you're pissing away $500,000 $550, a year on stuff it didn't matter. That's By the way, forget the money for a second. That's ineffective in the end. Yeah. Right? So, so when we say we don't have enough people, of course not. But we'll never have enough people at that level. So, that, so it's, it, it's also, it's not just are, are we looking at the right stuff and priorities. It's did we buy the right technologies? Do we have the right tools? Well, I mean, how much of this stuff could be automated? I mean, you know, the thing I always find, and again, you, you guys have more experience on the pen testing side. But if, if I brought you guys in post-breach and, and you had as much time as you wanted to look around, what would you figure out? And then how do I learn from that? How do I start to automate things, whether it's with technologies or the processes I have or something? But, but this is the way we start to think about it. So whether it's prevent a breach or prevent widespread damage from a breach or whatever else, you know, just to kind of quick recap, my first question is, you know, what's your mindset? What, what's your approach? And what have you done about that? What are you measuring? How, how are you informing that in any particular way? Second question, so what are you automating 
across prevention, detection, response, and, and that trio. If, if you're not using something from each of them and improving the others, you're really missing out. Well, you know, there's, part, there's another ahead. aspect to this uh, that, 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 that um, uh, where we haven't really overlooked. We've discussed it partly during the day, and that is the compliance and, and regulatory frameworks are really pushing organizations in the wrong direction, right? I mean, everything we're talking about here. Look at the grumpy <laughs> face. Look at the grumpy face. Yeah, look at it. Look it's Jeff. beautiful. Look, it was a grumpy face. There was. But, but everything right. we're talking about it's is. The implementation of the programs, not it's the programs. The, it's the comeback. It's to come back and, and, and get organizations to refocus on what is the most effective way to spend their dollars. What is the most effective way to spend their dollars in terms of people? Because people are the biggest dollar expense any organization has, yes. hands down. And, not to, and because not just their salary, but all their benefits, including health insurance. Everything. So you can go down a compliance checklist because of poor implementation – and say, yes, we have an IDS, yes, we have a firewall, yes, we have a this and that. But, and then you can fill out all the reports at the executive level and say, yeah, we are, we are in compliance. And yet you have an incredibly ineffective defense posture. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. Yeah. I mean, my background, 10 years as a QSA doing PCI. Um, How many drinks was that? <laughs> I think we need to like have a whole <laughs> fistful of drinks right bring now. Bring them all. Just bring so the bottles want, over. I do have a fist. Two fist. He's, he's got a he's got a backlog. We gotta go. We gotta go next door to catch up later. Damn. But but, but, my but point most is, of the company is the compliance is driving us the wrong direction. Yes and no. But I mean, you know, I happen to be in the PCI industry. Most of the companies that I worked with wouldn't wouldn't have had a security program if it wasn't for PCI. They wouldn't have been doing much if anything. And and most many of the companies I worked with that were serious about security were serious because they'd had a major breach. And so, well, so they got hurt, right? Because they got well, let's, hurt. Well, let's well, just spin it then, right? Because yep. I, I think that's a fascinating conversation. Um, that we'll have but, on Tuesday. And we are, and I look forward to it. But, mm -hmm. there, but there's two things to this then that, that I think matter. And the first of which is incremental improvements okay. Um, Jack, yes. you and I talk about this frequently, right? I mean, is, is something better than nothing? And I frequently come down on the side of no, um, but incremental improvement is good. You don't have to do it all today. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just need to get better today than you were yesterday. Yeah. Now, so, and, and, so, and, and, that's, and move that forward. My, my usual counter to that is that you're being too optimistic and <laughs> and that my challenge to everyone listening tonight as – with every other time this conversation comes up is nothing that aiming that high. My challenge to everyone is to suck less tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. And there is the, there, there is it, like the headline right there. Right? I mean, well, seriously, so quote unquote, Jack, suck, suck, less tomorrow suck less tomorrow is a notable goal, depending on your profession. Um, <laughs> but what Mike's saying is how do you know you suck less tomorrow? How do you measure it? How do you measure right, it? Right. There, there's a oh, point. God. Yeah, well, that's, look, I'm, even I can't drink myself in talking about <laughs> metrics for tonight. But um, <laughs> listen, right, there, well, there, there are. Because a lot of companies think they're doing better because they've bought something look, else. They hey, just Jack, because you measure I can share with you a link from Gartner on metrics. <laughs> you know what? That'll suck less than a link from Ponemon on metrics. Damn. Because at least they won't still be coated in brown, smelly stuff. I have to say the article from Gartner on metrics is actually pretty good. That that I, Marcus Random dude who we started the night with has wrote the best article on the, metrics ever. He's written a series on yeah. metrics. It, the problem best I ever. have with metrics, pretty smart guy, you know. The problem I have with metrics is a lot of people measure the wrong things and then don't measure right. over time, so they don't know what they're doing, right. and they get really wound up on numbers. And right. it's a poor analogy, but if you've ever seen like a cabinet maker or boat builder. They don't. They use storyboards. They have a stick that's cut to the link that something has to be, because if you introduce a number, you can get it wrong. Does the stick fit between the two things? Is is right? <laughs> How's that for a setup? <laughs> wow. Oh God! Does the stick? I, I was fit I was looking at some of those two. Are things we going to talk about back doors now? I'm just. All right, I'm going to shut up now for a minute. <laughs> well, back you know, to I mean, you, Michael. Suck less well, tomorrow. That's my. Look, it's, it's a well, and, and I look. You, I, I like the work that Mark. Does it fit between Jack? Does it fit between those two things? 
Uh, oh, God. I didn't even... Let Michael get in there. I didn't even mean to go to the gutter, but at least... Let him get in there. He's He is the guest. He's got to get his stick between two things. It's a place to splash around. Look, there's a difference between measuring what matters and just counting stuff. And a lot of us focus on counting. Um, and that's uh, maybe it's better than nothing. I, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, I like the idea, but you know, Jack, you laid out the right stuff. Right? You have to know what you're measuring. You have to know why you're measuring it. You have to have the ability to tell that story. You have to be able to look at the trend. There's there's a lot to it, and that's how we start getting better with improvement. It also, you know, the thing I've looked at uh, it, just broadly in terms of compliance, because I think Jeff made a good point in that there's a lot of companies that wouldn't have done anything without the compliance. I think it's a I think it's a fair point. But the thing that we seem to sometimes forget is that sometimes compliance means you can say that doesn't apply to me, and we and we don't. We we want the whole checklist filled out. And you know the reality of it is, if we you can do both, right? You can manage your risks effectively and be in compliance with something to say, nope, here's what we did about that. But that means we have to know what we're doing about that. And you know the thing that's interesting is like when we talk about the confidence that we have. Right. All right. Well, so how good is your prevention? How do you know? How good is your detection? How do you know? How how effective is your response? In fact, really, how prioritized is your response? If you suddenly get hit with an attack, where do you focus first? Why? How long will that take? What is that going to do to the business? Are they prepared for that? Do they understand? Man, there's a ton of questions here that we need. And, and that, you know, to jump around then, I mean, that's that's my fifth one. What happens when the breach happens? What do you do? Uh, it's too soon, I think, to, to comment effectively on some of the more recent breaches. But, man, if, if, if you've got to be offline for a couple of days and you take your email servers down and you've basically unplugged from the world, my guess is you weren't ready for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Michael, maybe I, I maybe to... it's truly unprecedented uh, or sophisticated, complex. Is there like a rate chart for how we stack these up now? Um, you know, super double unprecedented. But anyway, yeah, I mean, you got to know what you're doing. Secret probation. Michael, yeah. I, 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 I hate to cut you short. Um, what I want to do now is... Is I that wanna, a short joke? Yeah, no, it is not. It could be, maybe. Are for, you vertically for challenged? Joff. I can make Joff shorter just by pushing I, I, his chair back. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. Uh, now we're on the same level. So, uh, <laughs> what I want to do now, I want to take a break. I want to come yes. back. I want to bring a couple more guests on. Michael, if you can, I want you to stay on the line. Um, we're going to talk about the, the Sony breach and some other current headlines. So I want you to stay on the line, hold your thoughts. We'll come back uh, but, and wrap up with another like 40 minute segment or so. But we but, did five questions with Michael the last time he was on. Oh, come on. Let's do it, do it again. I'll do it again. So, okay. Michael, are you ready for five questions? I am ready. Three words to describe yourself. Bald and beautiful. If you were a serial killer, what would be your weapon of choice? Spoon. If you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? Into the breach. Breach. Barefoot and uh, uh, brilliant. In the popular game of Ass Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? Second. Choose two celebrities to be your parents. Frank Sinatra. Uh, Rachel McAdams. Ooh, very nice. Oh, wow. Okay. You didn't say Angelina Jolie, so you don't win a free t shirt, apparently. <laughs> 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 That's a history there. All right, we're gonna Michael, stay on the line. We're gonna take a short break, come back, bring in our next get next guests even, and talk about the stories for this week. So stay tuned, don't go anywhere. EFF.org forward slash donate. Make sure you go do that. I just did. It was fun. I got a sweatshirt. I can't wait. Oh yeah. <laughs> Not as cool as this one. Yeah, not as cool as that one. 